as long as you have, you know, a business, a wholesale business that is very tight. And what I mean by that is, you know, no mucking around for payments. You know, you want to give machinery out, just make sure you're pricing it properly. Because at the moment, wholesale is just, you know, race to the bottom. Like, seriously. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode three of a five-part series with Noah Adra from Stitch Coffee in Sydney, Australia. We are talking about the Australian coffee scene right now. Um, and today in this episode, we're going to talk about the coffee roaster. We've talked a lot about cafes. We've talked a lot about the coffee consumer. And I want to talk, Noah, about what it's like to be a roaster that's doing B2B as well as perhaps B2C right now. You, uh, you, you really did set the tone for B2C in Australia with Stitch Coffee. Um, what does it look like? Let's start at B2C. As a coffee roaster, what's that like at the moment? As from B2C or? But let's B2C. do B2C first and then we'll do B2B. Uh, a bit to see as a coffee roaster, there's a bit of a nice little, you know, light by the end of the tunnel a little bit, uh-huh. uh, especially if you've done really a good job in your uh, digital marketing throughout mm-hmm. COVID, after COVID, and you had a, you know, very well functional website. Uh, you've done a great uh, investment in your SEO. online and your SEOs and your online and you build a really good report and you have a very, you know, solid subscription base. Uh, you were able to earn people trust. So any product you put out there, people got to be like, yep, I trust this brand. I want to try it. I think from this perspective, uh, from B2C to go wholesale straight to the consumer, obviously there's, there's a very good outcome. If you did what I've mentioned before, that's okay. what I wanted to ask. If you have yes. already done that, you're just going to reap the rewards of the investment this many years it's later. It's going to, you know, yeah, because people are, you know, consuming <laughs> at home now. Yeah, they're converting, you know, they're looking for wholesale to buy straight, you know. Sometimes they go to a cafe, they have a very good experience and they go online of like, subscribe to Stitch Coffee because they tried right. Hobnob or somewhere at a cafe, right? So it's kind of, you know, kind of, work and and some people I don't want to buy from them directly I want to keep supporting the The coffee shop that I go to and and I'm going to buy my bag of coffee through that so from a from a C market audience you're you're kind of you've done all these investments correctly you're only going to continue you can either keep what you're doing or you can grow at a you know certain percentage a year how good you are and how much different um, you know areas of their life you kind of touching you have like really good uh pod or you have this or you have stuff that is not just for them for their family members if it's not for you as a gift for your mom if it's not for your mom do you know what i mean like you mm-hmm. need, you, your, your website need to have different reason for them to visit mm-hmm. if it's just been in a bag you're quite limited in in your offering you know you're not really giving them that wide range of one for me, one for my grandma who has, right. you know, a pod machine. One for me, I know somebody flying. Let me get them a ski bag. Or, hey, I'm going to, you know, a hotel. I know there's nothing going on over there. I'm going to buy a drip bag. You know, so once you start having those multiple layer of product that talk to different segments or different life adventures, I guess, or, you know, mm-hmm. lifestyle, then then you are in a, you know, very good, safe environment. And, you know, you're going to continue doing what you're doing and people are going to trust you and they're going to talk about you. However, 
if you invest none of that and you just focus on your B2B transaction, which is the, the kind of, you know, sometimes it's a cheap way of doing it, but it could be very expensive if you don't know how to do it properly. Um, uh, the difference between them is, you know, if you, if you just solely a contract roaster or just want to sell coffee to people, you have an acquisition cost in Australia to buy machinery. You know, if you don't have a very strong name, you end up buying a lot of machine just to big your name up. And then you're going to put yourself in a lot of risk because, you know, a lot of people don't pay on time. You're going to have a cash to cash problem. You're going to have a cash cycle situation. Uh, you know, you end up funding most of the coffee shop and then you have to just bag asking for people to pay you back, you know. Uh, and, um, you know, those are the kind of big challenges in the B2B. Um, but I believe B2C, it, probably a better way to actually expand mm -hmm. uh, and and you can reach more people in that sense um, as long as you have you know a business a wholesale business that is very tight and what I mean by that is you know no mucking around for payments you know you want to give machinery out just make sure you're pricing it properly because at the moment wholesale is just you know race to the bottom like seriously we'll get to the Big b2b time. in a second um because there's so fucking much i want to talk about there this is the stuff that i do so much of my consulting work in and there is the same mistakes keep getting made in so many at the market in the market at the moment but we'll come we'll come to that in a second with regards to b2c this is really fascinating right now because from all the consulting work that i'm doing this is as you said, the place for the most potential for growth, right? The consumer is perfectly positioned right now to be looking to save money. The best way to do that is to go direct to the roaster. Here's the part that a lot of people get confused about. What's the investment, if you can speak at it in as, as wide a term as you want or a specific term as you want, with regards to advertising to convert a customer? A lot of people have this idea that I can spend $500 in advertising a month or they say, I spent $500 on ads and I got nothing. The, 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 this is a very tricky question, right? Yeah. Because you actually can spend $500, <laughs> but like have an amazing target strategy and you like... <laughs> Good luck with that. It. And, <laughs> Good luck And, and with sometimes that. You, you might get your money back. Like yeah, you no. might. <laughs> Maybe. You know? like I, if... can give, I, can, I can give you a good example. I'll give you a good okay. example, right? Go. Give an example. <laughs> so we are the, you know, and this is, I mean, this is not an, ex it's it's a good example, but it's not something that's going to happen, you know, okay. you, All on the a time. daily basis. No, right? no, no. So we are the distributor of origami in Australia, right? So mm -hmm. we, we, we. So I went and I did origami dripper.au as a wholesale and B2C uh, website, right? All right. Now, you just, everybody who want to buy an origami, they put origami dripper. Okay. <laughs> without spending a dollar on SEOs, without spending any, <laughs> anything. <laughs> There's without nobody even else. advertising. There's nobody without, else hijacking nobody the else. SEO. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else that's an origami dripper. <laughs> exactly. It's perfect. So sometimes... So what I'm saying is these are very rare cases that right. could happen without spending a dollar. Okay. Right. Uh, but it's not going to happen every day. However, just to answer you, it's, it's probably at least, at least when we first started was our, you know, you had our budget is five grand uh, a month. A month. At least. Did you hear that folks? Like I, the, yeah, a five, question five I get grand. a lot. Five grand, pip, a question I get a lot is how much should I be spending on advertising and what's my ROI? What's my return on investment on advertising? And I'm like, well, uh, a $1,000 budget on advertising is not going to work. You need thousands of dollars in advertising a month investment to start to move the needle. Now, while when you were making that investment in the beginning, and I think in the beginning it was more than that, wasn't it? I think sometimes you might do stupid mistakes and you probably press the right. wrong impression to click by, okay. you know, so it could happen, you know. We've all done it, bro. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, but the, the, 
Yeah, go for but, it. But the ROI on something like that, like if I'm investing 5000 it's not as simple as being able to say, well, I'm going to see $6,000 in sales from that. No, I mean, uh, all right, so this is a scenario. So yeah. during COVID, we went, you know, 1000 2000 3000 5000 right? And 5000 went around for at least two and a half years where we have to continuously evolving, you know, because spending a lot more money. Yes, actually, yes, you can. If you spend a thousand, you get five grand all a month. If you spend a little bit more and you have more target, you could reach the $20,000 a month sales with four from $1,000. No, 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 no. From, from, from that. However, after three and a half years, now four years in, mm-hmm. now you, now we only spend you know, one thousand dollars to twelve hundred, but we are growing at a much faster rate without spending. So it's a long term. It's a long game strategy. Yeah. So you're not gonna see it. You're not gonna feel it. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna make even if you do twenty thousand, five thousand plus. You know, cost of shipping and all the other stuff. You're not gonna make it. I think you have to have it for like a five years plan and just keep watching your data, keep watching your improvements. Where are you doing it wrong? Where are you doing it right? You know, all those kind of mm-hmm. little bits and pieces. But I can tell you, you know, we started with, you know, an, a simple website. Then we moved to another website that we made some mistakes choosing the right platform, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, and and that new website probably arrived, I don't know, cost costs maybe sixty five to seventy five thousand dollars you know uh, and was the wrong platform trust me uh <laughs> sometimes it was the right seriously. platform but built on the wrong thing you know so now you have to spend another ten grand to reshuffle it so you you know you learn. there have been some numbers so. since you opened stitch that have honestly made me want to gag there are some numbers that you've shared with me that you've spent you taught me about risk appetite for real, for real, if you were the person, and you and I have had this conversation, you're the person who has shown me what, you've shared numbers with me. I'm like, what the fuck have you done? Why have you spent all this money on this thing? And you're like, wait, I promise this is going to pay off. And then five years later, you're like, see? it, And, and it, it has. Takes, it takes time. It, take, it takes time. You have to really kind of wait. It's just the waiting. As long as you're spending it at the right place, you know, like... But you've got to be earning Don't. it in order to be spending it. You're not you're not like some of these people that we know I, that have like millions. That it doesn't matter. It's, you know, we know people no, no, we who have millions so and millions and millions of dollars that they can spend and it doesn't matter if they lose it, right? Yes. That's not who you are. That's not who I am. No. Like any money that we're investing in our businesses, it comes from the money we've made from within our business. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And and it's just about sacrificing. You yeah. just have to, you know, yeah. when when you are when you are building a brand, it's different when you're running a simple business. Like when you, brand is very very expensive exercise. There's a lot of money that goes into stuff that you will never see it back for another. You know, like we we bought a drip bag machine. I mean, who needed drip bag machine if you do fifty? A month sometimes, you know. But you're playing uh, the long game, but, right? Yeah, you play the long game. Then we're like, okay, let's just do it for other people. You know, that way we grow the market. Different revenue There'll be more stream. People interested. The revenue stream, but not just that. Get more base players. Get more uh, user base. So the more users they are out there, the more people are gonna know the product. They're gonna purchase the product from us or from anyone else. It doesn't matter, you know. But you're building a demand. For, for this particular product that is going to be a very specialty coffee driven, you know, mm. um, it's not a pot, it's not this, it's not that, it's quality, right? So it's just the way you have to, you know, kind of take advantage of your, not take advantage, but that competitive advantage in your decision making and mm. and how do we, how do you come across it? And, you know, we're learning the amount of mistake that we did manufacturing for other people it was crazy, you know. Uh, I bought the first machine; it didn't even have a proper oxygen, right. uh, nitrogen flushing, you know. So I had to buy another machine. Uh, but you know, I didn't sell it to the people until I made sure that the second machine we're buying is, you know, giving the right nitrogen mm-hmm. flushing system. 
then we're like, okay, at least we're confident now to give it to people. We didn't lie to people or, or do any of that. So a lot of lesson you're going to learn. Uh, but, you know, from if, if you're a coffee roaster, wholesale, wholesale is a very, very tough market, very competitive. There's no new cafes anymore. It's very hard to find the new new players in the market. And everybody is fighting for the same cake right now. You know, everybody, mm -hmm. you know. And if you think the prices are going up, no. Um, and, and that's kind of sad. So that's hence why I think the shift into B2C consumers really bring them in, give them this amazing experience. If you're, if you're a coffee roaster, you need to give them experience, not mm -hmm. about just coffee. You have to give them the whole it's not a pretty bag so they... either. That's that's like table no. stakes now, right? If you don't yeah. have a great bag, don't even think about it. That's just the beginning. Yeah. Like cus consumers expect that now. Can you can you before you continue saying what you're going to say, just help people understand how the B2B market works in Australia because it's unique. Here we don't have equipment as a part of here being Dubai, we don't have equipment um, as a part of being B2B. So can you explain to people why Australia is so unique? America doesn't do that either. I think what's unique in here on B2B uh, is that you are a free consultant as a coffee roaster, right? right. So you're consult in terms of human resource. <laughs> you consult in terms of what you know milk I should be using. You consult it, what sh sh I should do this or I should do that or where can I find my barista? Can you find me a barista? Right. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, what are, who we, well, you know, we roast coffee. Um, you know, that's one aspect of it. <clears throat> the other aspect is they call you anytime. They bring you to the cafe to ask you the most silly question that can simply <laughs> jump on a freaking phone call as if your time is not important to anybody here. You know, and and then you have to go and answer every. I'm like, it's not even my business. Yeah. Anyway, that's part of this. And then the last part would be the expectation you're gonna give them the coffee machine, the grinder. Like even if they do the minimal of decaf, they want an ek. An ek you for know. decaf. The Even if fuck? they barely sell, they barely sell a batch brew. They want to have an EK on this. Sh like, I'm like, why? You don't even do this. But the thing is, it's not about why or convinced because there is always someone else who's that's prepared to do it. And this, this is what's broken about the, the whole approach, right? <laughs> the problem is... you can talk until the end of the world, but, you know, there's always someone else who's going to do it. So in the Australian market, the uniqueness is you're going to commit to someone for 12 months. Are they committing to you still? Like, do they say, well, nah, do you... they don't, so they no. want equipment and they want like that. So the machine and the grinders, they'll use your, so they they get that for free, right? As a part of, as long I mean, as you're their roaster. And in, in, yeah. for free, yeah. It's incorporated into the cost. Do, do you reduce the price of the per kilo bag? significantly if they don't get the equipment? I think uh, to answer this, not not always significantly, because sometimes there's really not much difference between mm. them. You know, you, you, you're just trying to get a number, really. You're not. Right. And, there, and there's a lot of secondhand machine right now because a lot of cafe shutting down. So secondhand, secondhand machine is everywhere. So now you go to a roaster, like, wow, you got six, seven, eight, ten, twenty machines. Not me. But, you know, others, I probably have like two. Uh, but still, it's a lot. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. they'd be like, just plug it in. I mean, you know, what are you going to pay rent on the shelf? You know, just yeah. whatever it takes. So it's hard. It's it's quite hard. And you know what? The, the easiest thing you can do in your life is you can't get divorced. You can't change your girlfriend. You can't do a lot of things, right? But it's easy to change a coffee roaster, you know, and a milk supplier. <laughs> Is that how you and... guys think about it as roasters? <laughs> no, no, but think about it, right? You can't get it's rid like, of your as a, cafe, <laughs> as a cafe owner, you can't get rid of all your problems in your life. But what is the easiest thing I could change? That Ten oh. people every day knocking on my door saying, hey, hey, 
got a coffee for you for like hey, $10 hey. cheaper. <laughs> and he feel like, or she or everybody, <laughs> feel very important at that moment. I was like, yep, let's do the change, you know. Uh, some of them are nice enough to give you a call and say, hey, look, what's going on? What can you do? We have this relationship. But still, you know, sometimes get to a point where it's, it's, a, it's a paradox. Yeah, and it you doesn't know, feel uh, like a healthy paradox in this. And not that there are very many healthy paradoxes, but what I mean by healthy paradox is it doesn't seem to be a paradox that has many off ramps at the moment because there no, are so many other worse. things. Yeah. Exactly. There are You're so losing. many other things <laughs> back to back. <laughs> Which lose, leads us... losing just to the one. <laughs> it leads us to the topic of our next conversation, which is green coffee. So join us in the next episode, folks, because we want to have a conversation about really a part of the supply chain that all all of us are experiencing a challenge in right now whether you're in uh, whether you're a coffee producer all the way up to whether you're a coffee consultant right now green coffee is at the cornerstone of your headaches um in none of the best ways possible so join us for the next conversation uh peace of and peanut butter have an amazing rest of your day I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon, and stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.